This school's been on a real journey for the last three years. We came in, we looked at the curriculum, we talked about inclusion, we talked about what knowledge are children entitled to in RE, what knowledge are children entitled to in science, in English, in maths. Right, that's our starting point. Right, we've got five years, how do we break this down? How do we sequence it? Where are the cross-curricular links? What we're trying to do at the moment at Noel Baker is target diversity from all angles. So we're not just thinking about the curriculum and we're not just thinking about things from a cultural capital point of view, it's everything, it's the whole child, it's the whole school community. A whole school equity plan is about making sure that all students get the same opportunities. The school, our community, so that's the parents, the students um, and the teachers are all involved in coming up with a common vision. They might want to feel included being some sort of representation. In, in this school there's been quite a few situations where I felt as if like I wasn't included a lot and I felt kind of powerless. I have some siblings in years below me and I just hate for the idea for them to be going through what I went through. Especially this year, I feel like it's been brought up a lot more, which is why I feel like it's more easier for me to talk to teachers about it. There is more of a focus on the teachers and the young people working together. It feels like there's a more inclusive community. They are very good opportunities. As a governor, the governors are more involved in the decision making and the planning of the school. And that never used to happen before. So it's about awareness, it's about training, it's about putting mechanisms in place where it can happen. I've got a daughter here. She noticed the change in terms of the, the staff, the community, the way that the whole school works. It was a lot more focused, it was a lot more organised. But young people were very much part of that process. They've got a voice. We Well, when's the first time a child comes across somebody who looks like them in the curriculum or who sounds like them in the curriculum or has um, identifies in the same way in the curriculum? Where is it? We are talking and debating more now about scientists um, and their discoveries. For example, in our space topic, we'll be talking about um, Maggie Pocock. We've seen so many female scientists coming through. And identifying to our students that this is a black female who has done wonderful things for physics and for space. She's come from similar backgrounds as, as you, so why can't you do exactly the same? The Institute of Physics realises that there are uh, stereotypes in science and that predominantly science um, and physics is seen as a male, white dominated career opportunity and it's about informing our students that that's not the case. Well I think it's really important that children, or well, all of us, can see ourselves in the world around us and feel valued and respected and celebrated. I think it was about June last year, um, I realised that I wasn't fully a girl and I started going by different names and trying out different names and trying out more masculine names. It was about January this year, I started going by the name I go by now. Like an email went out to all my teachers saying like, not to address me by my birth name and to try their best to re refer to me by like my chosen name and it was kind of like a, a click. They were all really supportive. Maybe just think about Sports Day and how we've made that inclusive. Yeah. I go to a club called All Colours Council and it's a group of LGBTQ students, allies, who meet, we talk about um, inclusivity in school and we talk through like newspaper articles, like stuff that's going on in the world related to the LGBTQ community. I couldn't take advantage of it, like a sacrifice. Part of the work we've done this year around our equity policy has been around setting up student voice groups um, and parent voice groups um, and governor voice groups and staff um, voice groups and talking to all of those different groups about um, school policies. Are there any aspects of that that are without us realising or unco unconsciously causing children to feel anxious in any way? I don't think you'll ever see a school this supportive of a student. 
and helping their students in this massive journey that is being a young person. Looking around the building, you can see the positive messages that the school is trying to um, promote. Looking at their changing uniform, you're looking at young people taking more pride about themselves. We are not We lead! We lead! We're power! We're power! The more work we do on diversity and equality and inclusion, I think the more comfortable students get, the more they feel supported the more educated and respectful they become and that students feel safe and now feel a sense of belonging in the school. And that's something that you can't really measure. Next year will be my last year in the school and it will just make me happy to know that um, before I leave, um, I've actually helped to improve something in school. We really want the school to be a model for how society could be and it's our job to educate our young people, they are the future. They are going to mould and model what society looks like long after we've gone. We've got to give our children a seat at the table because only then will they be able to change the world. <laughs>